Hey guys, this is Jace with Fresh Tracks. And as you can see, it is a cold day here in Montana. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about how I stay warm when it's cold outside and I wanna camp in the back of my truck. When I first got this camper shell for my truck, the whole idea was to have a low profile camping system that I could sleep in when I'm out on hunting trips or just camping trips throughout the year. And my first thought was, when it gets cold out in the fall, in hunting season and in those late winter months, how am I gonna stay warm in this thing? And so I started going through some ideas like, okay, what are my options? There's, you got your little buddy propane heaters, you got a space heater. And then I, after doing some research, I came across these diesel heaters. And as you can see, that's what I landed on. And I'm gonna kind of tell you why I picked the diesel heater over a couple other options. So I, I have a buddy heater that I've used in past for various things whether that's a tent or a little camper trailer or something. But when I got to thinking about using it in a confined space in my truck bed, I wasn't really liking the idea of being in a closed space with those things because I kind of worry about the CO2 carbon monoxide problem. I know I think they have a safety valve or something like that that shuts off and I've had one shut off before in a closed um, environment and it kind of freaked me out. Um, so I definitely didn't want to sleep with one and the risk of maybe dying in my sleep because of the carbon monoxide. The second dilemma I had with that is a lot of times I'm camping with my dog and if I put a little buddy heater that's got a burning flame on it, he's kind of rambunctious, his tail's wagging, he's gonna touch it, burn himself, catch his tail on fire, knock it over. It kind of was a fire hazard. And then the third thing is when uh, my fiance Chloe and I are together, we lay out a double mat rather than my single cot here, I'll put a double mat down and it takes up the whole floor. So there's no floor space. And at that point, the, the buddy heater isn't even gonna fit in the truck or be at, be at a, a spot where I can use it. So I ruled the buddy heater out, started looking into like space heaters. They kind of take up the same space and have some of the same issues of being hot, burning. Uh, yeah, if you touch it, you burn yourself. They could tip over, catch things on fire. I got my dog again. But then you also have to run those on a battery source. And from the research I saw, they deplete the heck out of a battery source. I'll, I have a couple battery sources behind me here that I'll talk about here shortly, but they will run through a battery in, an, in probably less than a night from what I could tell. So then I got to the diesel heater and we're gonna talk about why I love this thing. And it's become my staple in winter and cold camping when I wanna sleep in the back of my truck. So after doing some research on diesel heaters, I found a plethora of videos on YouTube with people showing how they use theirs, how they set theirs up. And there's kind of, there's a really complicated way to do it from what I found, and then there's a really easy way to do it. And I think I landed on the easiest way to do this. Um, so right here, this is a fully self-contained unit. It has the heat source, it's got the electronics. So it's a fully self-contained unit. I bought this for $100, I believe. They're very cheap for what they are. And that's, in my opinion, the easiest way to get into this. There's a bunch of kits out there where you can build one together. And then like, I've seen people build them in these their own boxes. And then some people permanently put them in their truck and then they gotta run uh, holes in their truck to run out the exhaust. I'm gonna show you how I did this all self-contained on the outside of my truck. And I just toss it on and off when I'm ready to use it. All right. So at first glance, you might be thinking, geez, that's a lot of stuff to set up. I have a couple extra things that I'm not actually using. I just was gonna show you a few options of. So it's actually really simple. And I'm just gonna go through my process of setting it up and kind of talk about each component and like, um, and just show you how I think this is really simple. For the amount of heat you can get, you can camp in the back of your truck in single digit temps, which I'm gonna show you at the end of all this. We're gonna camp in it tonight. So um, I'm gonna show you how you can stay really warm on really frigid cold nights. So obviously this is the self-contained diesel heater unit. This platform you see here is a separate piece and that's actually a tire stand rack. So that actually hooks onto your tire and what I've done is I bolted this diesel heater. So this is the component you'll receive if you buy one like this. And I just screwed it right into the bottom of this tire stand. Um, let's see if I could pick it up because there is a hole on the bottom that I needed to drill out. Can you see that? There's a hole in the bottom. That's where you will 
need to run your exhaust out of. So there is an exhaust pipe that comes with this and uh, that's where that'll go. Um, so back here, this is just where you're gonna um, plug in your electronics. In this video here today, I'm using the Dakota Lithium Power Box, but once I get it set up, I'm gonna show you another option that's a little bit more budget friendly and tell you some other more budget friendly options to run power to this, because you can really make this as cheap as you want. It just hooks on to the tire like that. And there we have it. Like I said, we'll go ahead and plug in this Dakota Lithium to give the unit some power. And this is how you run the remote and the electronics to run that fuel pump. What's nice about this power box, it's a fully self-contained, oops, unit that's weatherproof. So once you clamp it closed, you can keep this thing right outside all night for the duration of your trip. And whether it snows, rains, whatever, it's gonna be okay. So before I was using this Dakota Lithium, I was running it on this Jackery. And the way I was doing it was, I bought this, at, it, again, it comes, this kit comes with the wiring to plug into any source, but what it comes, what it'll look like, it'll just have two ends that look like this. So you'd put these on the back of this, the unit here. And then I switched that out on Amazon and I got this one that has the little 12 volt style cigarette plug-in. And cause I was running it on this Jackery, which has the, the plug-in for it. And I'd get a couple nights out of this, uh, running this thing all night. But like I said, you can make this as cheap or as expensive as you want. These are kind of some more high-end electronics to run it on. The more affordable option would just be like one of those 12 volt lead acid batteries. I don't have um, experience with the lead acid battery, so I, do, I, I can't tell you how long those will last you before you need a recharge. But these options, they'll last me a, a whole hunting trip. What's nice about some of these too, if you need to in the field, you can charge them up sol by solar if you did deplete something. So here's the exhaust I have. This comes with the diesel heater that I purchased, came with this. And this is just gonna run your uh, diesel exhaust fumes out the bottom and outside. What's nice about this unit, like I said, having it on the outside of my truck is the exhaust is already outside. You, and if you wanted, you don't really need to put this on here, but it kind of muffles the sound of the exhaust and keeps it a little quieter. So I'll go ahead and put this thing on. Not the greatest, it's kind of seen better days, but like I said, this is a very cheap unit. I just typically get it on there. And you can point in any direction for this purpose of this video. I'll leave it there. I usually kind of point it out this way, get it out of the way, but that will work for now. So the next part, you're probably wondering, how do you get the heat of this heater into your truck? Well, this is where I had to get a little creative. Um, luckily, my camper has a sliding door here with a screen. So what I did is I went online and I'll, I'll link all the components and everything in the description of this video and I'll find the website that I did this from. I, there's a website where you can put in some dimensions and get a uh, pre-cut piece of plexiglass, or I'm not sure if this is actually plexiglass, but it's a, a plastic um, pre-cut to the dimensions I needed. I basically just got the dimensions of this window and put it in online and ordered it and they shipped it to me. It's pretty cheap. Don't quote me on it, but I think it was around 30 bucks, maybe even cheaper than that, maybe 20 bucks. So once I got it, what I did was I put some weather stripping that I just happened to have around it to keep it. Cause what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it in this window behind the other window glass. And now it's in there and it's, it covers the screen. So now you don't have your screen open all night, but you do have a hole for your ducting to run through. And so what I did was I drilled the hole. I'll list the dimensions of that and the products that I use for that. Drilled the hole and epoxied this piece that attaches to the ducting. And again, this piece component, this plastic ring came with the unit and it came with its own ducting. 
which I have here. But I actually upgraded the ducting. The ducting they sent was pretty chintzy and not didn't seem very durable. This was a little better and it's a little bit of an upgrade. But what's nice about using this right here is it gives me something to clamp this ducting to. And then that way it blows air directly into the camper. And like I said, this um, unit, this diesel heater unit I bought um, came with its own rings for the ducting, but the ones they came with were ones that you needed a screwdriver to take on and off or loosen and tighten. And so I found these ones on Amazon that are you can just twist by hand. They make it way easier. Pretty affordable upgrade in my opinion. So go ahead and twist that on, bring this one down here and get this one on the unit. There, that's all I'm pretty snug. And then what I like to do is I'll go back into my camper and close the window on top of that piece of plexiglass just to kind of reinforce it, weatherproof it a little more. And that's it. It's fully set up and ready to go. What's nice about this unit I have, it comes with this remote so I'll just hop in, close everything up, and from inside my truck, there's an on and off switch right here. I'll usually, once it's fired up, I'll go ahead and put it on the lowest setting because it doesn't take much to heat up the back of this truck. And the lowest setting will use less fuel and less power, and I could go at least three nights without uh, having to replenish the diesel fuel. So now what we're gonna do is tonight I'm gonna hop in here and sleep in it. I'm gonna set up a temperature gauge for outside, inside, show you the difference of how cold it can get at night and how warm it could be in inside and how comfortable you can sleep. We are officially in the camper or ready to go to bed and spend a night in what is a very cold night here in Montana, but it's actually pretty warm and comfortable in the back of my truck right now. So. As you can see, let's see if you guys can see this. If you can't see this, I'm gonna overlay it on the screen. It's kinda tough to see in here. But we're looking at, what does it say? 12 degrees. It is 12 degrees outside right now, guys. It is cold. But in the camper, we're about 56. I think this thing's still adjusting because I've only been in here for maybe like five or 10 minutes so far. One, th one thing that I wanted to mention about this diesel heater that I really enjoy is that the heat that comes out of it is a really dry heat. Unlike your uh, propane heaters, they produce a lot of moisture. So whether they're in a tent or any confined space without a lot of ventilation, you'll get a lot of condensation on all the interior surfaces. With this diesel heater, it doesn't... Um, doesn't produce any condensation and you can actually dry things out really easily and it's pretty sweet so that is one pro that I love about this overrun propane heaters um, so with that being said we're gonna hit the we're gonna hit the hay here and hopefully get a good night's rest so I'll catch you guys in the morning and we'll see how we're doing then I don't know if you guys can see this but it says nine degrees outside and it's approximately 75 degrees inside my truck camper right now. So, I don't know what to tell you guys, but you guys can see how cool this heater is. If you guys camp in the back of your truck, whether that's a tent, maybe one of the rooftop tents or a camper shell like I have, and you want to camp in winter months when it gets cold, what more can you ask for? This is, thing's been running all night, still running now, very warm in here, and I mean, it does what it needs to do, and I couldn't be more excited. So, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, about this setup, I would be more than happy to answer, so just make sure you drop them in the comments below. And I'll also put together a list of all the different items that I used for this setup. 
So I'll put the heater unit there, all the different little components I have. So be sure to check that in the YouTube description below. Like I said, have any questions, drop them down below. I'll get back to them. Um, and let me know how you guys stay warm if you use a truck camping setup. Maybe you guys have a different way that I don't know about or you think you have ways to improve what I'm doing. But yeah, anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you guys can stay warm out there when you're sleeping in your truck from now on. Thanks, guys.